Whether you have a bottom drain, a UV light, a pond vac, or none of the above, I highly recommend an important pond maintenance tool, which is called a silt rake or a leaf rake. And I've purchased many different brands, and by far the best one I've come across is by ProTuff, and they have an amazing warranty. So let me show you some tips I've learned in using the silt rake. This is the Pro Tough Silt Rake, the 17 and a half inch one. They have a leaf rake and a silt rake. The silt rake is for finer debris. I don't really have an issue too much with the leaves. Yeah, you get some leaves, but this also I can get the leaves like there's a leaf. You know, I can get that with this as well. The issue with if you're just concerned about leaves or larger material is that this is going to be slower and it's going to get more material because it's such fine mesh that the water has to pass through. But I'm really concerned about just the fine organic material that's on top or floating around or down that's settled on the bottom of the pond. I've bought several uh, pool rakes and I've tried some DIY pool rakes and when the mesh bag ripped, I tried more finer mesh. This is by far the most finest mesh bag I've used and it is the most sturdiest. I've never even ripped it yet, and I've had it for months. It has a lifetime warranty, no questions asked. I can't find a better warranty than that. This is simple. This is a simple pawn maintenance tool right here. I love it. No electricity required, and no all these cords over, not elevate all this stuff that you got to worry with pawn backs and all this. But it's two main things. The leaf rake, the head of it, okay, and then the pole. The pole, Pro Tough makes as well. It's just, it's pretty expensive. And yes, you probably, you know, like, uh, you're never going to need to buy another one in your life, I guess. That's the way you can look at it. So a good investment for sure. Uh, I've, I've broken several that I've only used, I think, some from Home Depot. I got two of them. And one, I think I used it for like five minutes one time. And I've, it, it bent in half because of the weight that this is carrying. So I tried this one. I'm actually pretty pleased with it. You definitely want a pole that could at least get to the middle of your pond. That way you could do on this side or on that side. So the pole is good. Oh, again, I'll put a link in the description for this pole. It hasn't broke on me yet. I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, once it does break, I'm planning on getting Pro Tufts modded because I'll just be done and trying that as well. I highly recommend this over a pond bag if you have a bare liner pond. I have a bare liner pond, right? I don't have gravel on the bottom. This is awesome and it's really easy upkeep to a bare liner pond because there's not all those crevices of the rocks and the gravel that can get sucked in if you don't have the right attachment to your pond bag and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not saying you can't use this. Of course, you could use this if you have a rock bottom pond or rocks in your pond, it's just not going to be as effective as a bare liner pond with the heat. You can't get in all those crevices, right? You're probably going to have to invest in the, the pond back. And plus, you, you can get the, the top of it, no matter what kind of liner or rocks you have or don't have. I bought a, a waste pondo back four. Maybe I'll make a review on sometime of how I used it. But I ended up selling it, and I'm so glad I was sold it so I don't just take up space. Um, it took me about a day and a half to clean this, and not even spick and span clean. It, it was a disappointment. Not the shop vac itself, I'm not downing the waste shop vac for, but for my setup, it took so much time and effort to go around my you know 50 foot by 25 foot pond and then, then also the, the bog filter, which is additional to that. And it was just, it took a lot of effort. Compared to all along that day, I just wish I could grab this and sweep it out. Besides the Pondovac 4, I, I used uh, other ways like the, that connects to the hose. I forget what that one was called, but you could kind of push that and it connects to the hose with the hose pressure and it kind of sucks it into a bag. That was terrible. I think I spent like 30 minutes with that before I'm like, this is terrible. 
<laughs> okay. But this is by far the easiest when you are using this for a natural swimming pond. It is vital. I, when I was more ignorant of how the science behind the, the cleaning method works and the filtration method, I literally like intentionally scrape the sides, the biofilm. There's like a film on the liner that forms on the liner. It's a healthy film and you don't want to scrape it. So when you're using this for your natural swimming pond, your goal isn't to scrape all of that film that attaches on the liner. My only exception I found is on the bottom because when you're swimming, a bare liner or well, rocks could be slippery as well, but a liner could be slippery when you're swimming or when you're walking. But if you don't let that film accrue and build up, then it's not, it's not slippery. That's my only exception. On the sides, the most I could keep it that biofilm it's a healthy film it'll help clarify your water it's it's good you definitely want to make sure this right here is up the total flat side is what you're sliding around the uh, pond liner this the pro tough it just accepts the regular pole attachments little two notches this is just a regular pool leaf pole you know the attachments push those in and slide it and there you go so it's really like a, a push broom effect it's like you're pushing it pushing the broom and then it's like pulling it up you're bringing it in getting all the air out making sure that that basket is going the right way not like this or all twisted okay like that you're gonna go right here and then push broom Go all the way nice and gentle, not scraping. You don't want to scrape all the biofilm. You just want to get the excess organic material. And then pull up. Keep on up with that opening, just trying to face up. See how that opening is almost level with the, uh, with the land? It's not down like this. It's as level horizontal as I can. And that helps prevent the waste from escaping as I'm raising it up out of the water, okay? So this is what I could do. So I would be going like this. See a lot less already. The muck and all that, in that same spot. So go like that. And say I wanted to water, that's looking a little, those sedum plants, the succulents. I could just go like that. So you would just flip it, flip it back. I'm ready to go. So more controlled method on fertilizing the plants right there or in the bucket is just grab the end right here. There we go. Flip it around. But for swimming, just take that out. And then I jump in. I usually go from my, my boat dock. But I have my boat attached to my boat dock. Not where it is now, but attached to it right in front. I put a bucket in my boat. That way when I'm swimming, I swim and I just am scooping waste until I can't, you know, can't hold my breath any longer. Going up, I bring it up level. Try, you know, not bringing it up like this. Waste, you know, kind of common sense, right? Bringing it up and then I go over to my boat and then I get as much water as I can and then go over the boat like I'm in the water and then dump it. Super easy. Compared to the shot back, oh my word, you gotta, I had pallets to raise it. It has to be above level for the outlet. You're going extension cord all around it. So we're gonna do an example. We got this cleaned out tub and we're going to let this water, now watch it. Watch that water come out. See if it's clear. Now, when you're, Taking this out, when you look at this right here, now move it in circles, okay? Go around because it'll clog some of those pores, the mesh pores. So if you get it all around the mesh pores, it'll come out more. Okay. 
not much. This is really, really fine stuff. And, and the fish, as you can see, they're, I mean, I can catch the fish right here, but they're used to it. Here comes my, my koi. He's used to it. Sometimes he even follows it, you know, it's like a little game. 